In part 5 of lecture 3, we will discuss attribute grammars. Context-free grammars allow us to specify the regular expressions that we use to create words and other strings from our input stream of characters, and they allow us to parse programs, but they are not always so useful in specifying the meaning of a statement or an expression. While it is not impossible to describe the rule allowing floating point variables to be assigned integer values, but not the other way around. It is not particularly easy, and it is impossible to specify in BNF that variables must be declared before being used. This is why attribute grammars are important. They give us a way to do this in a notation that complements Bacchus NAR form, and they allow us to specify semantic requirements of the language that we can use together with BNF. The semantics of a language can be static or dynamic. Which we have depends on whether the meaning of program components change at runtime. Static semantics are indirectly related to the program's meaning during runtime. They are set when the program is compiled and will last through the runtime of a program. Dynamic semantics refer to the meaning of various components of a program, including expressions, statements, and so on. In some languages such as Lisp and Scheme, it is impossible to check the meaning of certain program components at compile time because they are either set at runtime or can be changed then. An attribute is a property that is associated with a symbol in the grammar. It can be, for example, the data type of a variable, or its value or its address in memory. Attribute grammars make use of two types of functions. Attribute computation functions, which can be used to compute values for the attribute, and predicate functions, which state some of the syntax or semantic rules of the grammar. Attribute grammars have a formal definition, and it tells us that an attribute grammar is a grammar with added features. Each symbol x in the grammar has a set of attributes a of x and that this set has two disjoint subsets s of x which is a set of synthesized attributes which are passed up the tree from son to father and i of x inherited attributes which are passed down the tree from father to son every production in the grammar has a set of semantic functions and a set of predicate functions either of which may be an empty set. Intrinsic attributes are synthesized attributes whose properties are found outside the grammar, for example from the symbol table, which can list the declared types of the identifiers. Here you see a grammar for assignment statements that is similar to the one that we had before, with pairs of rules, one syntactic and one semantic. We are told that in the first pair of rules that an assignment statement derives a variable, an equal sign, and an expression. And the semantic rule tells us that the type that we expect for the expression is the variable's actual type. In other words, we are expecting that the type that the variable has been declared is the type that we expect the expression to have. The second pair tells us that the expression is the sum of two variables. We number these variables so we can distinguish them in the semantic rule that follows. The semantic rule tells us that if they are both of the type integer, then the actual type of the expression is integer. Otherwise, it is real. The third pair tells us that an expression may be simply a variable, in which case the expression's actual type comes from the variable's actual type. And the last pair of rules tells us that a variable can be either A, B, or C. And whichever of these it is, its type will depend on our looking it up in the symbol table. This is the parse tree for the expression A equals A plus B. You can see clearly that var and var2 are both A, and that var3 is B. But there is no other information present. You can see how attributes are derived. We know A and B's actual type from looking them up in the symbol table. We know that the expected type of the expression depends on A's actual type, and that the actual type of the expression depends on both A and B. 
We can see here that A, in both places in the assignment statement, has an actual type and an expected type of real. We can see that B's actual type is integer. Following the semantic rules, we find that the expression's actual type is real because the two variables are not both integer. Additionally, the expected type of the expression is real because the variable being assigned the value, namely A, is real. This example shows us how every rule works in this case. If A had been integer and B real, we can see how this would lead to a type checking error, which is exactly what we would expect to see.